On today's episode, we are dealing with some of the most important questions of fantasy football going forward, talking about who we're hungry for more, breaking down the Thursday night matchup, and more. Make sure you subscribe right now and leave a comment how your season's going. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast one more time. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. Jason Moore is on the mic. Yes, I am. Jay Grizz on the mic. Me, Mike, on the mic. It's pretty confusing being in the audio industry when your name is Mike. Yeah, that was a problem for you? It, it, it remains a problem for me. Like what just happened? Yes. Because people say the word Mike, and then, of, I mean, your your ears perk up, and you go, oh, you're not talking to me. Right. Like, you, someone would say, speaking of the mic, yeah. and you probably think mm -hmm. someone is asking them to speak in, into you. <laughs> that I totally see how easy that would be to be confused. Yep. Uh, look, it's you'd be surprised. <laughs> be surprised how much it happens. Welcome into the show. November 8th, Wednesday, show Fourteen ninety nine. Ooh, what does that mean? That means that tomorrow is the big show. Fifteen hundred. If you missed yesterday's announcement, we are taking a poll right now in our Discord to break down the top ten fantasy footballers' nicknames of all time, and that is up to you. It's up to the Foot Clan. Ballersdiscord dot com. Head over there. First off, if you're not in there, I mean, you're doing it wrong. It's a great place to bounce ideas off of people, like-minded people. I mean, people are talking news, trades. Just it, it is a happening place, and this is where you get the link to go vote on the names. There you go, ballersdiscord.com. You can go to that announcements channel once you get in there. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks, Brooks. Thank you. Yes, the announcements, which that's where all the important announcements go. In the announcements channel? Yeah, yep. We nailed it. Wow. So check that out. Hold on. I'm right that down. <laughs> Make a note. <laughs> yeah. That's what go to announcements. Got it. Let's see. Uh I believe wait, is this true, Al? Jason promised fantasy footballers uh the musical? Is that for show fifteen hundred? I think that's what he said a, like a week or two oh, ago crap. when we Andy sang podcast. Ah. We have a lot of writing to do. <laughs> if that is the case. I hear those things take years to write. It's show 5,000. We've got... Show okay. 5,000 <laughs> is Fantasy Footballers, the musical, the end of the story. <laughs> Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Twitter, at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. Follow Andy at Andy Holloway. Again, BallersDiscord.com. You should jump into there. On today's show, the news, Hungry for More, Thursday night matchup, and some good old-fashioned mailbag. Well, let's kick it off. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Let's find out what players we are hungry for more of. We'll go real quick. Jay Grizz has said Cole Komet. Mm, makes sense. Tight end of the Chicago Bears, who has seen a target share of 27% and 31%. He plays tomorrow night. We'll be talking about him on the breakdown. Yes, we will. Secret Bajant man loves him some Cole Komet. He does. So uh, that's that's not a bad – that's like your first good pick in a while, Jay Grizz. Because I feel like usually you're just – yeah, you are forcing it. Um, I'm going with uh, Deontay Johnson as okay. my hungry for more player. He has come back from injury. First week back was in the 60% of snaps. But the last two weeks, he's been up near 90% of snaps. He's the clear-cut number one read in this offense. Since returning from IR, he's got target shares of 26%, 35%, 31%. And his lines the last two weeks, 8 for 85, 7 for 90, and that touchdown – He's heating up. I feel like you have to be in on Deontay Johnson. I forgot um, until recently someone pointed out uh, how bullish I was on Deontay Johnson in the draft in the season. season. Yes, thinking yes. like this that he would be the clear cut one for this team. Obviously, the hamstring issue 
at the beginning of the season, wiped that whole thing away. But now that he's back and he's healthy, this is reminding me, like, I, I think it's good for the Steelers offense. And his fantasy value should really be there. I look at where he is in consensus rankings and pricing and all things. I think he is undervalued right now. He looks to me to be a really, really solid, certainly a wide receiver two or better rest of season, um, you know, could be top 15. I, I think that is a good point, the, the, I, the, the fact that he is undervalued. Because when I'm still in that camp of, of when I think about Deontay Johnson, you don't think about, well, this is this is a top tier guy, but the numbers have been just bananas the last three weeks since he's been back, and I see no reason that those won't continue. Yeah, his his pace over those three games would be 164 targets, 113 receptions, 1439 yards, and six touchdowns. I mean, those are incredible numbers. So yeah, yeah maybe maybe go see if whoever has Deontay Johnson is is thinking of him appropriately. I'm hungry for more Alexander Madison. We are back, baby. We are absolutely back. He going to eat. <laughs> I mean, this is a perfect I mean, for this segment. This boy going to eat. That's the question is what which Alexander Madison are we going to get? Looking forward, he has the fourth best schedule for running backs. He does have Detroit in week six, week 16. That's kind of a bummer. But last week 18 opportunities, great uh receiving touchdown. He just gets so, so much volume. Justin Jefferson, not likely to be back this week, but he could return. And it's, remember, the the fantasy output for Madison over the first six games, it was it, it was kind of up and down. But it was we had gotten to a point where he was really cooking. And talk about the volume, weeks one through six, 71% of the snaps, a 12% target share, 81% of the running back attempts. I still think Ty Chandler is you got it. He is a worthy addition. The the now backup running back was previously the backup running back, and he's back to the backup running back. Maybe they work Ty Chandler in a bit more, like they were doing with Cam Akers, or maybe they just don't like Ty Chandler. And Alexander Madison is going to get everything. And when when he's in a good script, he I mean he can be a good player. The first two weeks against really tough run defenses, it was not great. But then you had the Chargers, the Panthers. I mean. 4.6 a carry, 5.6 a carry. So the opportunity is massive for him. I, I fully expect him to be a 70-plus percent snap You think player. we go right back I to – I think we go right back to him being the volume play. And in a bad matchup, you could throw him in there and you hope that it's like week one against Tampa Bay where he had 11.9 fantasy points. Like that, That's not great, but still against a good defense. It's running he, back two stuff. Yeah, he, he volumed his way to a relevant – Output like this week against New Orleans Saints, it's not a great matchup, but I think he's going to get everything. So he's going to be in your lineup. You're hoping he crosses that 10-point half PPR barrier. But then the next three matchups, Denver, Chicago, and the Raiders. Beautiful. I mean, those as far as fantasy points given up to running backs, that's that's it doesn't get much better than that. And he plays with national hero Joshua Dobbs. Yes. Yes, I mean, he does. That's, just, that's, a, that's a fun little point right there. <laughs> That was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Running backs? No. Mm -mm. Ribs? Mm. Yep. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Mentioned it, but Justin Jefferson is unlikely to play uh, that was from the head coach, Kevin O'Connell, on Monday. So we will see when they actually open that practice window. Yeah, he said they might open the practice window. He's not. I mean, he's just not playing this week. I, I, Correct. I think that we can be honest and clear. All the reporting is that that is not the expectation. He's not practicing. If they open his practice window, then that doesn't mean he will start this week. He's got three weeks, just like we saw with Kyler before he has to get back out there. If they don't open his practice window this week, that's really concerning because they, they still could take the three weeks. That means that they're not sure how long it's going to take. I doubt that they would open his practice window and then put him, you know, right out there at full steam. So um, that's something we'll be monitoring. Cardinals quarterback, Kyler Murray was activated. It's official. So it is go time for Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Hot off of oh, yesterday's debate. Oh, baby, yes. 
Eat it, Mike. Yes. The Rams signed quarterback Who? Car Carson, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. And also released Brett Rippin farts, which that is two fart jokes right in a row. Talk about releasing him. Uh, they also released the gas man. I mean. Oh, the gas man, Miles Gaskin, and Brett Rippin farts <laughs> released together? So they're just trying to air that locker room out. Very nice. Uh, so, uh, okay, so, I, so I, I've, I'll start it with I. So I tweeted about both of us tweeted immediately. If you haven't been following the show long enough to know, Jason and I made a bet years ago. <laughs> years, years yeah, ago, the of, craziest, funniest bet of all time of who will be done first: Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan. Yes. And I was on the Wentz side. Jason was on the Ryan side, and it just. The the ebbs and the flows of this bet over um, years <laughs> has been just the wildest ride. But Carson Wentz is now he is now the backup plan for the Rams, which I tweeted about it, saying you know things must be way worse. And it, it look it's a joke. I'm dunking on Carson Wentz, but he's back. It is this has to be better news for Puka and Cooper Cup should. Matthew Stafford not actually be able to play. That that bet was made in August of 2021. Wow. <laughs> August of 2021. And we're, we're and still we're, going. Well, we might be at the conclusion. I we, mean, we I, won't know for sure until the end of this year if Matt Ryan doesn't get a job, which he's but, not going to get a job. He's not going to get a job this year. The, the, you the think real he's going to get a job next year? The real test is next year because Matt Ryan had said, no, I don't want to play this year, but I'm I'm not closing the door. He's probably done. Yeah, I think I, the NFL's closed the door. But will Carson Wentz get a snap? We don't he know. doesn't need to get a snap. He's playing football. Oh, he's you know, oh no, yeah. this is a win, brother. I think we got to have a conclusion to this. Okay. Um. Yes, he he is coming in to be the backup. Either way, when it comes to Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup and and Daryl Henderson, yeah, the whole Rams offense, the, everybody. This is great news because you you will have a competent quarterback behind center it will either be Matthew Stafford with a hurt thumb or Carson Wentz here's the way I view the Rams offense they take a step backwards from what it was with healthy Matthew Stafford if Stafford plays we've seen him play through this exact injury on this exact thumb before and it, he was much worse playing with it so the Rams offense takes a step backwards if Stafford is on the field previous to his healthy version of himself if Carson Wentz comes on the field they take a step backwards from healthy Matthew Stafford. He's just not as good. But they are competent. The ball will be moved. They've got Sean McVay to to run the system, and this will be an incredibly massive, important step forward over Brett Rip and Farts because previous to this signing, Puka and Cooper Cup both, I mean, we said it uh, yesterday, they're, they're must bench. They're like, you can't start those guys if – uh, Brett's the quarterback. Just can't do it. Titans updates. Uh, Will Levis is officially the quarterback moving forward. Good. Of, of course, this is what they have to do at this point. And wide receiver Traylon Burks remains in concussion protocol, unlikely to play this week. Goodness gracious, the Traylon Burks saga. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy, it's really unfortunate. He just can't stay on the field. It's too. such a good matchup, too. Yep. David Montgomery of the Lions returned to practice on Tuesday. The, that, that fits the timeline. The comments from Dan Campbell, who has been uh, exceptionally forthcoming on injuries. When we, you know some coaches are liars, some aren't. Dan Campbell usually is just you know he's your straight shooter. Um, and he was asked flat out, "Do you expect uh, David Montgomery and two of the offensive linemen who have been injured? Do you expect them to play?" He said, "Yeah." They were out there today, Monday. We're going to see on Tuesday if they get a full practice in, but everything looks good to go. My expectation is that those guys are ready to go. Then you had the full practice Tuesday. That means David Montgomery is integrated into the David Montgomery role. He is someone that you should be starting, and I personally believe it flips back to the previous uh, script where Jameer Gibbs is in the Jameer Gibbs role and Mon Monty's in the Monty role. A flash from the past. We're back, baby. The Dallas Cowboys. It's just fun to this is just, funny. just to say, but the Cowboys have signed Martavis Bryant to the practice squad. He was reinstated after all these years, and he, he's going to get a chance, I yeah. guess. I mean, he is a That's cautionary wild. tale. It's not fair what happened to his career. Correct. Where 
You know, it's like he does something where his career's over, and then the next minute, it's like, oh, you're allowed to do that now. <laughs> but uh, but your career is over, so I'm glad he got a job. Right. Uh, this is completely and utterly irrelevant. I wouldn't pick him up in a dynasty league. I mean, this is – right now, you're not really able to play Michael Gallup and Brandon Cooks. I can't imagine that uh, a guy who hasn't played in years is going to become relevant – as the fourth option behind sure. them, if he even ever gets on, on the active team. roster. Yeah, it's just it's fun to remember what yeah. could have been with Martavis Bryant. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Thursday Night Breakdown. Coming into Thursday night with a combined record. Of three and fourteen, <laughs> nice. The Carolina Panthers one and seven take on the Chicago Bears, who are two and seven. The DraftKings <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook line to Chicago favored by three and a half. The over under an incredible thirty nine points. So th I've gone back and forth on this game thinking on on uh, like puking or retching. No, on on like every now and then I go. I think this could be a surprising shootout. You know, we've seen... Okay. Be because whenever you've got teams like this that can both pick six their way to being down on a deficit, and then you can get into a little shootout with two defenses that, you know, aren't that great. Um, but then I... So I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to take this as a surprising game to score a lot of points, and then and I go, man, that's probably dumb. Uh, you know, Tyson Bajant and... Bryce Young, they're not the guys I want to bet the over on. So I'm I'm staying away from a definitive viewpoint on like whether this is over or under the the game total. Uh, but there is you know there there are relevant fantasy assets on both sides of the ball. Talk about the running game uh, for the Panthers. What is going on? They you know we've right. seen this we've seen the switch to Chuba Hubbard mm -hmm. over the last handful of games that's coincided with coming off the injury for Miles Sanders do you think it gets back this week towards a 50 50 or is, is it I, still Chuba I still think that Chuba will have the majority of it it was like it, it wasn't the worst this past week against the Colts because he, he finished you know relative to the other players he finished as running back 24 but that was on 22 opportunities that was incredibly disappointing I think that Chuba is still in flex consideration and Miles Sanders remains the I'm not going to drop him but he remains on my bench until I actually see him on the field more more than 25 percent of the snaps and looking like Miles Sanders is supposed to look he, did, he had 11 opportunities last week so that the shift back to Miles could be coming sooner than later but to me, it's it's still Chuba as the main guy. So over the course of the season and when you adjust for schedule, the the Chicago Bears have given up a lot of fantasy points to the running back position. But um, they have really locked it down in the at least the running game, the actual on-the-ground rushing game. They have given up very few yards per carry. Here's a, a tweet from Matthew Betts. Since week four, Chicago's rushing defense, they've been dominant. They're number one in EPA per rush attempt. Uh, in rush success rate, in running back yards per carry allowed, all three first. If you look at the recent stat lines from good running backs against them, Alvin Kamara was 9 for 26 on the ground. Austin Eckler was 15 for 29. Josh Jacobs was 11 th for 35. Yeah. Alexander Madison, 18 for 44. Thank you Brian for Robinson, including him in good running backs. <laughs> 6 for 10. Um, so this is one where it's like, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I want to play the Chuba Miles Sanders game on Thursday night football. If I can if I can bench them for uh uh other decent mediocre option, I I feel like I'm looking elsewhere. Uh I mean it it's a tougher week, so let's let's take a look at some names here. Uh let's say uh Jalen Warren. Yeah, Jalen Warren, um I I think I would play against Green Bay. Green Bay's been gashed on the ground and, and um I think the Steelers offense is maybe getting it together now with Deontay. Uh, how about the new waiver hotness, Keaton Mitchell? Oh, I, I, I don't think I could go that far. That's like a, I could easily see him scoring more, but he's he's a guy you got to hold on your bench right now and 
until you, you figure out whether he's getting enough touches. I'll, I'll take the touches of Chuba. All right. At quarterback wise, Justin Fields has put in a couple limited practices. The the latest I'm seeing, and this is from BleacherNation.com, they are saying it sounds like Justin Fields won't play on Thursday. So we're getting we're getting close to Fields getting back, but expect that he will not be on the field, which affects your decisions of like uh, DJ Moore. Man, what do you what do you do with DJ Moore, who still somehow is still the wide receiver eight? on the year due to that uh, one week where he destroyed my soul. Great player. Been in the top 24 just twice. Are you are you playing him in which the, the Panthers – the Panthers give up points to the running backs. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll get into the running back dis, uh, discussion in just a moment. Are you confident playing DJ Moore or are you looking for, like, would you play Tyler Lockett? Oh, I would definitely play Lockett over Moore without – Okay. Without question, there there might be a little bit of rain in the Tyler Lockett game, but the matchup against the Manders is great. Tyler Lockett's just been better than DJ Moore over the last couple of weeks, including his down week. Um, so th that one's easy. I think if you've got a uh, Terry McLaurin, a, a Garrett Wilson, a Nico Collins, a Christian Kirk, I'm playing all those guys above DJ Moore. That doesn't mean you can't play DJ Moore. He's got the talent to house something. Right. Um, and I mean, Darnell Mooney was five for eighty-two last week. I don't say that to play Darnell Mooney, just to right. He could go to Cole Komet. Yeah. Secret agent man loves Cole Komet. Th he this does. isn't a this isn't a situation where DJ Moore is getting ten targets every week with the backup, and even though they're not valuable, you can't play him. He's they're not valuable, and he's not getting ten targets a week. On the other side, Adam Thielen. I mean, he's it has really slowed down the last two weeks. Eh, come come it, it the last week. Okay, I All feel right. like two 11, weeks ago. I'm just looking at the re the wide receiver 31, but 11.2. That's fine. That yeah, that is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but I mean, that's a slowdown compared to. Well, I mean, he was he was yes. on a rocket yeah, ship. He, Eventually, a rocket ship burns the fuel. <laughs> it's still going real fast. <laughs> that's it's just true. not accelerating. There's, there's no friction. <laughs> right. Uh, it just it keeps going to its point. So I hope he just coasts. Even if he coasts with what he did in week eight, which you know people feel like was a down week. That was eight for seventy-two on eleven targets. Right, uh, keep it up. Adam Thielen's in my lineup. Okay, against the Bears, Adam Thielen is absolutely. There's very, very few options. I would, I could imagine you were going to bench Adam Thielen for now. The difficult discussion. Oh yeah, because there's gold to be yes. mined, but you're not mining through rock. You're mining through poop, and so it's like <laughs> well, you, this is I, you got gloves on, but you're digging for gold. I mean, to be to give the analogy some credit, if I'm a if I'm a miner. I I think I'd rather go through the poop. It's softer. Okay, it's more get, malleable. All right, I can okay. get through it. Okay, no gloves. Okay, now we got to. Yeah, now <laughs> now it's a now it's a question. Now it's like, do you want a pickaxe through that rock and find gold, or there's gold right here in this <laughs> giant dung heap? Just put your hands in. Just go get it, brother. It's easy. <laughs> Which one you picking? So, what we're talking about is the Panthers. They sh like <laughs> schedule adjusted fifth against quarterbacks. Second against wide receivers, third against tight end. Is that because their defense is so great? Hold on, because they're thirty first in schedule adjusted points to the running back position. Yeah, it's that, because you just run on them. That's all you do. And so, what do you do here? Deonta Foreman has been pretty solid in relief. You have the one absolutely incredible game that was followed up by nine carries for thirty four disaster, and then against the New Orleans Saints. A very good run defense, twenty carries for eighty three yards. The the twenty carries is the point is the that's what really stands out. But Khalil Herbert is back. He is he was listed as a full practice on Monday and Tuesday. What do you project here? Do you do you have the courage to start either one of these guys, knowing that I mean there it's it's a possibility that they completely wash each other out, but there is there remains the probability that one of them, like Deonta Foreman, who's been getting all the carries, remains the starter at least for a week while Khalil Herbert returns. Yeah, uh, was was Herbert a high ankle sprain? He was, and so I mean, guys, superstars coming off of a high ankle sprain, they come back like Saquon Barkley, and they're they're just not even close to ready, even though they're healthy and on the field. Do the Bears look to Deonta Foreman, and we get? Another 20 carries. Yeah, it, it's it, these are great questions. The way that I view it is somewhat similar to the other side of the field with the Carolina Panthers. 
Chuba is the leader, you presume, because he has been recently, and Miles Sanders could just make it a 50-50 or could be the yeah. starter once he's healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of very similar. You've got Deonta Foreman on the other side who's been the starter um, recently, and then you've got Khalil Herbert coming back from injury who was the starter beforehand. If I have to pick between whether I'm going to start a Chuba versus a Foreman or a Sanders versus Khalil Herbert, I'm taking the Bears' side because of the matchup. So I, I think there's higher upside for touchdowns with them, um, and so I would I would play those guys first. My 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 biggest hope is that there is a very surprising. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising if we're able to predict it, but um, Deonta Foreman inactive and Khalil Herbert's the starter, and they go back to kind of the the roster construction they were using prior to Khalil Herbert's injury. That would make it a lot easier to not play Foreman. Well, it would be – and to make sure you play Khalil Herbert. I don't I don't think that's what will happen, happen because either. Herbert's coming back from a high ankle sprain and could re-aggravate it. I think they'll have the protection of Foreman in the game. If they're both active, which one are you playing first, Khalil Herbert or Deontay Foreman? Uh, I think I'm going to stick with Foreman for a week because it's – it's a high ankle sprain. Like Foreman has played excellent for the Bears in the four games of relief of being the primary runner. He's averaging 15 carries a game. He's averaging almost 70 rushing yards. So he's running at four and a half a clip, and that I mean that includes the down games. Like he has been, he's been a good player for them. How do you, how do you go immediately go right back to Khalil Herbert with the injury still sort of there? Eileen Deonta Foreman. I personally, in our league of record, as of right now, I essentially have to make the decision because of st stupid Thursday Thursday night getting blowing things up for me. What's the decision? Deonta Foreman as a running back two or A.J. Dillon. Oh, <laughs> but, man. Which every time I play A.J. Dillon, it's a disaster. Yeah. Because Cause it's, it's – I get it. I get it. It's because it's A.J. Dillon. Yeah. But I at least know that A.J. Dillon is – is going to get a certain amount of, of touches. And right now, it's Foreman is who is in there. Yeah, I, I don't blame you there. Um, I, I feel like I feel like I think Khalil Herbert will run ahead of Deonta Foreman in this game. I, I think he'll get the first touch and the, and the bulk of the carries. But against the Panthers, both players could be relevant. I'm not going to start Roshan. Um, I think right now, you just hold on to him. Yeah, it's... Good luck to anyone who has to make a decision about any of these Bears running backs like me. There is certainly pain waiting for us on Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> Thursday and, I, and I think you could start both tight ends here in this matchup. Cole Komet, you got to stay in the flames. 27%, 31% of targets the last two weeks. Bajant loves him. And and Hayden Hurst, he, think he's, he's only, sneaky? Yeah, I think he's sneaky because of the matchup. The Bears schedule adjusted really bad against tight ends. He's only had a few good games. He He's had a uh, good game. Really, I thought he had two good games. Mm, well, what's a good is six point four a good game because that's would, his second highest total. Then he's had a uh, good game. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'm thinking of last week where he had 54 yards and had that big 48 yard reception. Um, I could see him doing something against the Bears, but okay, maybe maybe you don't play Hayden Hurst. That's a DFS dart throw. All right, quick break, and then we will be back with the mailbag. Into the mailbag, we jump. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh. What? Why? Why did the bear jump in? He wanted to get in on Ask the mailbag. Him. Jay Grizz, your timing is is awful, man. You got. If we're gonna start, we gotta we gotta start at the same time. We gotta harmonize. Ridiculous cardboard bear. All right, mailbag. If you want to submit a question, uh, the. People often ask because they hear the mailbag. Well, how do I get in? Well, generally before a, a mailbag episode, we put a thread out there. Or you can go to the website, click submit a question. Or you can call our voicemail hotline at 302-464-TFFB. We've got a couple voicemails, so let's hear it. Hey, ballers. Love the show. Would you guys trade Chris Olave for Devontae Adams? Straight up. My opponent Next week has Devonte Adams. Let me know. Thanks. Okay. I, I I love I love the context to this question because in general, Chris Olave for Devonte Adams. If you're just out there and you're wondering who would you rather have, 
that's a really good debate. I mean, it's Chris Olave has been significantly. Everyone's been significantly better than Devonte Adams. It has been. Over, I mean, it, we kind of highlighted it yesterday, but the the run here for Devonte Adams well, from week five. Mm -hmm. So we're talking. This is a five game sample size. He has not hit ten points in a half point scoring format. It, his his it's been awful. That five game stretch would equate to a grand total on a season of 598 yards on 61 receptions with no touchdowns. It's it, 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 he's he's been destroying people. And he plays the Jets. I know the question is talking about next week with some context, but if you're going to make that trade right now, you're going to be playing Devontae Adams against the New York Jets who just completely shut down Justin Herbert and company. Keenan Allen was okay-ish, so maybe Adams can be okay-ish. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, it's... It's hard to have confidence in, in in Adams for you know just even the rest of the season. Yeah, I I I do believe that Adams will completely bounce back. I I I really think he's going to be a fine fantasy asset going forward, despite the five week murderous uh, row that he's been on. One of the things about this is his opponent that he's playing next week. It's interesting because you've got. Next week uh, um, is – Chris Olave would be on bye. Yes. So you would, you would be doing the, the sneaky snook move of of disarming your opponent and maybe they don't even fully realize, which this is, a, this is a pro move. Yes. This is a pro move to look at who you're playing in some future weeks and maybe trying to take away from their lineup without them realizing what you've done. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried uh, to make a trade yesterday um, straight up based on matchups and bye weeks and who I was playing. Um, you know, in, in week 13 um, is... Adams is on bye that week, too. Yeah, so for, for me, I tried to trade basically uh, Jalen Hurts for Josh Allen. It, it was more pieces, but that, that was the core to a guy who loves... If the Eagles, I figured he would want Jalen Hurts more um, because right now I'm playing a tough matchup and J J Josh Allen's bye is in a super weak matchup um, that I, I could start nobody and beat Jeremy's team uh, in week 13. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that'd be great to to play those bye week schedules. So, I mean, is it worth it? If, if you like Olave better than Adams, is it worth saying, well, next week I'm going to take Devontae Adams off of my opponent's roster. He plays Miami. I get to play him against him instead of taking points against me, and I'm giving him someone he can't play in return. That's a pretty big swing to get a W in a week. Where I think it's, pro I think that makes it worth it. That as a tiebreaker for me, those things, you know, you you got to have the Ws to go to the playoffs. You got to get to the playoffs to win a championship. I would, I like the thinking. I'm going to keep Chris Olave. I think he's better rest of season. Uh, this is a question from Jack. How do we look at Saquon Barkley now that Daniel Jones is on IR? I mean, he is the entirety of nastiness. <laughs> that is we his had, role. We had a, a game just a couple weeks ago against the Jets where he had 41 <laughs> opportunities. I've never, 30, seen, I've never seen a number that high. 36 carries, 128 yards, inefficient. But he was the entire offense. Now that was a that was the punt game where they almost broke the record for most punts in an NFL game. So they were afforded that they could just keep giving the ball to him. If they're playing against someone who's actually going to put up points, you you can't give Saquon Barkley thirty six carries. And does he? I mean, no no man can withstand that much of a workload. Like he will break down. Yeah, the uh, the way that I view him is a extremely high floor running back two. Um, you know, okay. he, he is a guy that's going to score ten fantasy points at least every single week. the 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 Giants don't have other options to go to to not give him the ball enough to get him to that baseline. And I don't think he hits twenty points in games he doesn't get a touchdown in. And I'm thinking over the next what what are there nine games left, something like that, eight or nine games left, he probably has two touchdowns. He has eight. Because he he has his bye week in week thirteen. Yeah, so I would say uh, I would say you know he has two or three games where he might reach twenty, and all the other games he'll be in that like 
10 to 14 fantasy point range. And a a thing to remember, like this is not a this is not a, a red alert panic on Saquon Barkley by any stretch because I agree. He's a high floor player. He's been over double digits for since he's been back from injury. And that's what the Giants scoring six points against the Raiders, 10 against the Giants, 14 against the Manders, nine against Buffalo. This team is not scoring, but Saquon Barkley, because of how much work he gets, he remains relevant. The th a thing to look at, though, we'll have no Daniel Jones. I don't know if we'll have Tyrod Taylor back at any points or not in this uh, in this season. The playoffs. Saquon Barkley on the road will be playing the Saints. Not good. On, on the road, he will be playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Worse. And then championship at home against the Rams. We're we're okay-ish there, but those are that's going to be tough. That's going to. He's not going to get 36 carries at 3.6 a clip. They can't afford to do it. But maybe all the passes go to him. TBD. Let's jump into another voicemail. What's up, ballers? For the rest of the season, would you rather have Derek Henry or Brees Hall? <laughs> rest of season, Derek Henry or Brees Hall? Jason. <laughs> uh, I, I saw this question earlier. I was doing some research, and man, I just kept going back and forth on these two. Um, Brees Hall, I obviously am in love with his talent to have a monstrous, huge game with one or two 60-plus yard touchdown runs or, or catches, um, I think stands with maybe two other players in the NFL. Um, the playoff schedule kind of comes into my mind when I look at these two players, because if we're talking rest of season, I mean, both both of these players have a really nice stretch. Um, if, if you go from now forward for Brees, you got the Raiders, which is great, Buffalo, which is great, Miami, not bad, Atlanta, not bad, Houston is great, Miami, not bad, Washington, great. So it, his stretch run from here on out is fantastic. Championship week, it's against Cleveland Browns, not as good. Um, whereas Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry – the the playoffs are really what you're <laughs> excited yes. for. Two games against the Houston Texans, who he destroys, but the the process to get there isn't quite as good. You've got games against Tampa Bay and Jacksonville. So yeah, the next two weeks are are more rough for for Henry. But then he gets Carolina and the Colts, two of the best matchups. Yeah, I guess this is this is one of those where I would say if you if your team looks like it's playoff bound. Right, you, you you need if you need wins the next couple of weeks, I'm going Brees Hall, and I would take that and get to the playoffs and do what I can. But if I'm already you know sitting at uh you know eight and two or 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 seven and three or you know I look like I'm on my way to the playoffs, then I'm going to take the playoff schedule of Derrick Henry because he's still going to be good along the way. Is Will Levis better than Zach Wilson? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought this was me. We'll have a little back and forth to have a discussion, but no. The the answer is yes. Yeah, I mean, I I I think <laughs> right. he is. Um, for, I, it's it's too early to know on Will Levis. I, I don't think it's too early to know on Zach Wilson. You know, there's uh, like I talked uh, poorly about my long term belief in Bryce Young, but it is too early to know on Bryce Young. Bryce Young could absolutely be fine. I. I I've I've seen things that really make me worry and make me believe it won't be fine, but I'm not definitive with that. The, the, he could he could get it together. Zach Wilson has had plenty of time, plenty of throws, plenty of games, plenty of starts, plenty of matchups where it ain't happening with Zach Wilson. Um so what I've seen from Will Levis, worst case with Will Levis is he becomes Zach Wilson. Uh, so yeah, I think Will Levis is better because he has a chance to not be Zach Wilson. <laughs> that's and that's all we need, right? A chance to not be him. All right, uh, off of Instagram from Devargus, trade Tyreek Hill. Oh, I love this question. Okay, so we're trading superstar Tyreek Hill for Tony Pollard, Jordan Addison, and Devonta Smith. This is a philosophical question. <laughs> Because you, it, it not having the context of the roster construction does make answering the question a little bit more difficult. But okay, we'll just talk surface level. Surface level philosophy. 
Tyreek Hill and players like Tyreek Hill, of which there are only a handful, you know, your Christian McCaffreys and and the the people that put up regular monstrous performances that help win weeks, they are worth more than multiple very good players. They just are. They are who wins championships. You don't win a championship if you don't have some of those monstrous performers. You can't have a solid lineup of good options. If you don't have a superstar in there, you're never going to cross that point threshold that beats good teams. So for me, I would rather have Tyreek Hill okay. because I'm still going to get other players in my lineup. You know, I'm still going to get uh, whatever, you know, like you said, there's context that's needed here. What what are your other running backs and, and mm -hmm. wide receivers? If, you, if you're starting Tyreek Hill and – trash off the waiver wire well then maybe you maybe you do need some depth and you hope that Tony Pollard becomes more of a, a star player but like Tony Pollard's pretty much stunk Addison is unreliable Devonta Smith you Devonte Smith you hope gets better now with Dallas Goddard out but Tyree Kill just puts up so many points in one position slot I think I would rather have him well you have Devonta Smith with no Goddard no, I, I that was a magical equation last year. It was magical, but it still wasn't Tyreek Hill magical. I, and granted, it, that magic plus Addison plus Pollard is probably worth it. I don't think this is an unfair trade, but I think it's important people realize the true value of a superstar is not is not just the it's the points coming in one spot that right. opens up. Uh, All right, I got his performance. Another superstar test for you, then. Okay, this is off of YouTube from Ethan Kreitner. Trade Alvin Kamara and Bijan Robinson for Christian McCaffrey and Jerome Ford in a full PPR. I'm eight and one. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alvin Kamara. Yeah. It's full PPR. Full, PPR. full PPR with Alvin Kamara for Christian McCaffrey. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This question is impossible. I'm taking Christian McCaffrey and Jerome Ford. I'm I'm going okay. to I'm going to try to get the one player who could put up massive amounts of points. Jerome Ford and the Cleveland Browns have the fourth best schedule for running backs for the rest of the season. Jerome, for, for all we know, Jerome Ford is just as good as Bijan for fantasy the rest of the season. I wouldn't, you know, say that that's the likely outlook. Um, but Arthur, Arthur, that turd, um, man, we made it, we made it over 40 minutes into Without, the show before we had to, to mention Arthur. Oh man, that dude sucks. <laughs> I saw I, Wait, uh, what, okay. Is there any chance that now the mustache is gone that the evil's been released? Yeah. That this weekend all of a sudden is just. Uh, Drake London, we don't know if he's going to play, but it's just, it's nonstop Bijan, it's nonstop Kyle Pitts. Um, is there a chance? There's not. There's not a chance, man. When you read this guy's upbringing and background, and you know, and talking about Tyler Algier is one of the best goal line running backs in the league. Well, that's why you give him so many carries inside the five. He's been <laughs> okay inside the five. I think he's what three for six or something. Yeah, that that's that's pretty good. But at the same time, but Bijan is is zero for one. Yeah, Bijan's been given one chance. Same as Jonu Smith inside the five. <laughs> the, uh, half of what you've given Cordero Patterson inside the five. Uh, I mean, th th this roster has so many carries inside the five, and only one has gone to Bijan Robinson. That okay. is hurting your team. Back to, back to the question. Arthur's distracting us again. Kamara and Bijan for Christian McCaffrey, Jerome Ford, full point PPR. You go on the Christian McCaffrey side. I am going to take the Christian McCaffrey side, but it is that that's that's a that's super tough. I mean, because full point PPR, all three of these are pass catching running backs as far as the three big names here. But Jerome Ford, I think, is you know he's coming off of his high ankle sprain. He's going to get better as the season goes on. Good schedule. Christian McCaffrey is he just scores more points than everyone, and that's yeah. what it takes with Christian McCaffrey in the league of record. I feel like I can I can have garbage. Right. I'm like, you, even yeah. I just, I have a you've win. been winning with AJ Dillon <laughs> as your RB two. This is the point. 
Like Jerome Ford is a huge oh, upgrade over that. Oh, I would if I could get Jerome Ford. <laughs> yeah, you'd be you'd be clear. <laughs> I'd be so happy because Christian McCaffrey puts up monstrous performances every single week. All right, got a fun one here from Chris Yek or Kiek. I don't know. Kiek. <laughs> What will it take for Jason to get a tattoo of the footballer's logo? Don't worry, though. Chris adds in, he can pick the location and size. Oh, I can pick where I'm going to put my tattoo? That that's super I mean, that's, kind. that's really kind, Chris. That The the person whose body the tattoo is going to go on, um, they get to choose. Man, that's what I love about our audience. Yeah. They are good people. Gracious. Thank you, Chris. Um, so what will it take? It would. Take, How do I talk you into a footballer's tattoo? You'd have to... You'd have to T- talk me into art that I like everywhere because I, I don't think I want a tattoo like if I were to go tattoos you know I, and get a sleeve of something I liked mm-hmm. okay then I, the baller's logo would be part of that or something I don't want to just get like a baller's logo be like that's the that's the one tattoo I what got a, what about a shield right over your heart it's too boob shaped <laughs> for I, I don't think it would play well I think it'd be like, you know, what's that? What's that fantasy footballer's balloon? No, it's a shield. It's a, uh, it's like a shield on my heart. That doesn't look like a shield. That looks like a boob. Lay off me. <laughs> There's fast food restaurants everywhere. It's not my fault. All right, Twitter question from Paul. Najee Harris on the up. Time to buy a low. Um, I <laughs> the baby Yeti. The baby Yeti, uh, he was better second half of last year. He's been top 12 two out of three weeks. Deontay Johnson is back. That helps the offense tremendously. Yeah. Um, the Muth might be back. Look, if you're in a situation like Mike is in. Oh, like, man, I'd be so happy. Exactly. <laughs> like, if if you're starting A.J. When- Dillon every week in the two, Najee is a target that you could get really, really, really cheap. But I could tell you that most teams don't want to be starting Najee. Uh, like, I, I think it's the wrong decision in a lot of weeks to actually put him in over other decent options on your team. Do you want... If you trade for Najee, you're going to play Najee. Najee or Madison rest of season? Madison, without question. Okay. So, that, that yeah, I mean, if, if you've got someone like Alexander Madison to play, um, I would do that. If, if right now your RB2 has been Deonta Foreman, and it's like, oh, now you might lose him, and and you just don't have another option. Then yeah, maybe trade a, a middling wide receiver for Najee because he won't cost a ton. But if you have other options, if you've got if if your RB two is Rashad White, uh, if your RB two is um, Madison or someone decent, then don't trade on the cheap for Najee because it'll it'll make your life a living hell. <laughs> Yeah, it's very possible. Off of YouTube from Stock five four six seven. Tank Dell or Deontay Johnson? Tank Dell or Deontay Johnson? I'm going Deontay. Yeah, it's Deontay. I love the I love what we've seen from Tank, but Tank's gonna be back and forth. Deontay's every week. Uh YouTube in a keeper league, this is from uh Daryl. In a keeper league, win now. Do I trade Bijan for Eckler? Yeah. Win now, win. Oh, you, oh, because it's keeper. Yeah, it's a keeper league. Ah, so okay. I was you like, would, why would you not trade? Bijan you would have. For you would have Bijan next year, and Ek, what is Eckler next year? Who knows? His contract is done. He is an older running back. The, I mean, he's 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 still a excellent player, but I mean, had does Eckler? I guess he had some chunk runs this time. I was like, yeah, yeah, he's 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 looked great this year, but. He's going to be a 29 or 30 year old running back in a free agent him and, market. That's him and Derrick Henry are going to be, <laughs> yeah. be fighting. Um, so you can't view Eckler as some great keeper option. Uh, I in our league of record, I've got Eckler there. Um, you know, he's not going to be someone I'm relying on looking at like in my keepers. What if, what if he all this like do 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 breaking news? Eckler signs two year contract with Los Angeles Chargers. Oh. That that and, is my hope. He's back. This offseason, he's back one hundred percent. Okay. He 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 looks every bit as good as he has looked the last several years. He's catching, uh, other than the few drops, he's catching a ton of passes. Um, he's gold around the end zone. Um, so do you take the risk though, 
Because that was all hypothetical. He didn't yeah. actually sign the two-year yes, agreement. Yes, you I'm take sorry. the risk. Okay. And, and it's not even it's not even that. It's not the risk that, oh, I hope he resigns with the Chargers. In a keeper league, if it's just keeper, where you're keeping like, you know, three max of four guys, it, you know, if it, it, two, three, or four keeper, one, two, three, or four keepers, I just don't view it the same way as like a dynasty league where I care so much about youth and I, I, I worry so much about who my keepers are going to be. There's so much turnover in keeper leagues. They are they're borderline redrafts. You can you can manage uh, away from that. Win now with Eckler. Last question here from Beetle fifty eight. Who do you have more confidence in going forward, week ten and onwards? Taysom Hill or Trey McBride? The <laughs> hype behind these two is unreal. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the the hmm. the <laughs> confidence in it's. It's ta it's got to be Taysom Hill. It would Hill. be Taysom Hill. It has to be Taysom Hill. But the usage we're seeing out of T. McBee is very, very exciting. The fact that Kyler's back, very exciting. There's, I, I think that Trey McBride, he should easily be a top 12 guy moving forward. But Taysom Hill with all his gadget plays is just, he's... He is an unstoppable force for fantasy at this point. Taysom's being utilized in a way that makes me have confidence in him. And he is, you know, the, the reason he's utilized the way he is is because he's a great athlete. I mean, he yeah. is hard to tackle. He is faster than people expect. He, he beats people to the edge. He runs people over. He is um, special with the ball in his hands. And if he's getting as many opportunities as he is, You've got to go Taysom Hill here. Uh, but I like both players, and you've also got the wrinkle of Zach Ertz presumably will be coming back off the IR. Yeah, it could be, yeah. So when he comes back, what does that do to Team McBee? So, I, yeah, it's Taysom. And what happens if Derek Carr misses time and they put they decide to put Taysom Hill at the quarterback and you're playing him in your tight end position? Probably not going to happen, but it's at least a possibility. That's going to do it for today's show. Jason was on the latest Dynasty podcast. If you're not aware, we do have a completely separate Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast. Drops every week. Always has Borg, Betts, and then usually myself or Jason on there. What did you guys talk about on today's show? It was a midseason award show. So we talked oh, about... Oh, I love awards. Yeah, but, but this was a helpful award show. It wasn't just like to dole out um, awards. It was like, you know, who is this year's... Uh, type of player from the past. So okay, we looked at okay. good players, bad players, uh, projecting them out. It was it was a lot of fun. And reminder, ballersdiscord.com. Jump into our community. Jump into the announcements channel. Get the link so you can vote on the top 10 nicknames of all time because that is happening tomorrow, show 1500. Andrew will be back. Starts of the week. Friday, more matchups and a wheel of shame that does not involve me. Or me. Or Jason. See you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.